way it currently stands, forced labor, slavery takes precedence over rehabilitation and public safety. Oh, by the way, while the Biden administration gives reparations to everyone but free people, look at the billions he has run over to Ukraine. We don't have black grocery stores because if you think about it now, just to get in that supply chain, it's almost unheard of. They don't want the truth to get out. Okay. I don't want to know what my family did or what all these people did and all Come this on, stuff man. like that. Okay. Come on. You read that 500 page report. There's this thing called white superiority and black inferiority. That mindset allows all of the behaviors that we've seen across generations, allows for the construction of these policies and practices and, sy and systems and structures that continue to oppress us. This is not a handout. This is a debt that is owed. You know, Allensworth was like the internet of his time in 1904, 1905. The total black population in California is about 2.6 million. And then of that, the descendants compose about 2.2 million of that. So Calif California, with a multi-billion dollar surplus, can absolutely afford to satisfy the uh, international terms for reparations, beginning with compensation. Um, any financial obstacle that exists that impedes the success of increasing financial prosperity needs to be dealt with and eliminated. No, no matter where we've been, no matter what part of this fight we've been in, we've been harmed, and we've had harm done to us specifically. Uh, when I got to Los Angeles, this was some of the worst segregation I'd ever seen. And remember, I'm telling you, I'm from Mississippi. Because as you can see, I'm giving you broken history right now, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, but I had to give it to you guys today. Thank I said, no, you. I got to show so them much. this because it's so precious it and not. nobody really knows about it. Black people don't have that kind of luxury. Our, our, our historically black communities have been um, redistricted multiple times. Now listen, if you can't handle the TR roof, don't tune in. All right, sir, can you say your name, please? My name is W. James Cobbin, C-O-B-B-I-N. Okay, sir, and uh, how long did you uh, play in the Negro League? When did you play? Four years, 1956, 57, 58, and 59. Okay, first of all, thank you for your service. And um, what positions did you play? In the Center field. Center field. New York Rockies. Okay. And uh, so can you kind of explain, you were explaining to me in terms of the Negro Leagues not being compensated for uh, your service uh, plan. Can you kind of explain how yes, it's, it's happening Yes, it's been going on for some time now uh, about the payments of the Negro League ballplayers who are still alive. Uh, and we've had numerous communication and letters with, that, with, with, with the Major League Baseball, but to date we have no resolution to that problem. And we're kind of concerned about it because you know, uh, in, a, in a short time uh, we're not going to be here. <laughs> you know, we're all now is in the late late 80s and early 90s. So uh, uh, I, we, we don't know what the game plan is really, but we feel like the game plan is they're waiting for us to expire, and uh, then they can negotiate easier with the families of the ball players who, who passed. Okay. So it sounds to me like this can also be something involved in kind of like a reparations package as well in terms of like 
our, our athletes, uh, especially ones who've played in the, something like the Negro League. Yeah, so the Irish, Irish, is, Irish is a little bit different because we actually played and uh, just recently they upgraded the Negro League as equal and equipment to the Major Leagues. Okay. <clears throat> and if that is so, by keeping us down for all those years that we that we played baseball, uh, the, the, the bill is, 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 is high <laughs> because they actually stopped us from, uh, they would not allow um, the news media to, uh, to cover our cup, to cover our, ba our game. And I think they didn't want any any, any any information to flow because they want uh, the Negro League to be thought of as inferior to the white major leagues, and that certainly was not so. Uh, because one of the recent things that happened on, uh, shows that because they elevated the Negro League now of as equivalent to the major leagues. Started the league. Started the museum. Oh no, the Negro. Who started? It was, was, I just can't remember off the top of my head. That was uh, Ruth Foster started the Negro League. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ruth Foster started the Negro League. He was blackballed, really, man. Yeah. He he started losing his mind up about seven or eight years later, and as a white man, and I don't, I'm not speaking on racism, but a white man was in with him. And he took all the credibility from Ruth Foster, but he is the he started the Negro League 1920. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that. I'm sorry, sir. What's yeah. your name, sir? I'm Dennis Bill, man. I'm Dennis the okay. president of yesterday's Negro League Baseball Players Foundation, and uh, we are here today because they are representing us also. And uh, it's uh, I think it's a great thing. Uh, what the what the what he's attempting to do? We're we're doing this similar to this in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where we're working with the living players. See, people don't even know there are players still living that played in the Negro League. We got about 30 players now still living. Wow. Players that some of them would have been Hall of Famers had given the opportunity, but they never had it because of the way things have been presented to the public. Uh, we are hoping that the major league adhere to what they uh, said they would do. They are not honoring the Negro League as major league player. There are a lot of benefits, though, that the younger players, players that are still living, are not getting. And uh, we are, that's what we are working on. We are hoping that they will come to that conclusion that they represent, or will represent, the living player of the Negro baseball league. Okay, so so in terms of what you feel the uh, living legends in the Negro Baseball League, uh, what do you think, obviously, should they be compensated for in terms of what would be the back compensation? Well, we should be given, first of all, a pension, a major league pension. They took that from us by using the number of years that we played in the league. Uh, and some of the guys did get a pension. But we got about 40, 30 some players living now that didn't get the pension. They did not play the criteria years that the, they qualified us to get the pension. So uh, that's what we're working on now because if they're saying we are major leaguers, mm -hmm. the major leaguers get a pension, and thanks to us, but they started, they're getting a pension at 43 days. If you play 43 days in the major league, you get a pension, a major league pension. Now they're saying we are equal to the major league, we should get that pension. Not only should we start getting it, we should get it from the beginning, when it start. So sir, if I can just ask you one more question. Yes, sir. So the major leagues, I, I was reading a report, as you were saying, now they're you know, wrapping in the uh, Negro League history into the quote-unquote major league history, and I'm using that in quotes. Um, with that said, in the article, they were saying that uh, some of the records, in terms of the games, it was hard to be found. Is that necessarily true, or so, like in terms of like recording of the games of the Negro Leagues and so forth, like the paperwork supposedly isn't there? Um, can you speak on that? Yes, I all? can. Okay.
because there's no way in this world that they can use uh, documents of the history of the Negro League that was not documented, that was documented because most of our history, and this is the true history, you don't find this in no book nowhere. The true history, most of it was never written down. So these, and I got nothing against the historian and the, and the, uh, the writers, but the true history, they never went to the players that played. They went to players that stopped playing at that date. And that's what they used. So the true history was never written down. And no way the Major League can use it, the stats of something that was never was written down as a way of giving back to the player. That is a true history. Sir. And then in addition to that, um, the Negro League played the White Major Leagues all-star games every year. Mm. Uh, and and the Negro League won about 80% of them every time. They discontinued that because they, they were embarrassed because the team that's supposed to be inferior was beating them. Mm. Right? And, and one of the things they did, they didn't want the news media to cover the Negro League. They uh, did all, all, everything they could to keep, to keep those statistics that they're trying to get now. They didn't want them before. <clears throat> and so since they didn't, since they didn't get them, and they advocated for the news media not to get it because it's supposed to be a very uh, league, then, then they owe us for the time that, because if it was, was proven, even just by the All-Star games we played them, we beat them all the time. Right? They knew that. So it's just a situation where uh, back in the early 1800s after uh, baseball was invented in this country, uh, but in 1887, 18, 1867, blacks and whites played together in, in, in professional baseball. But by uh, 1887, it was an unwritten rule. Blacks will not play no more. And, it, and it's for the same thing that's happening today. And, you know, uh, Georgetown there was 98% white, and they had five black players on the floor all the time. That, that's, that, that's the same thing across the country. Uh, and so that's what they were dealing with. They just didn't have the ability to, 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 to command uh, those leagues themselves. And they didn't want us to be in there to, 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 you know, to, to show them up. I wrote because. a book called Secrets of the Negro Baseball League. It's on in all the bookstores and, and Amazon, Amazon got it. But it's told by Dennis Bill. And that history that I'm, I'm write, I write about in that book is, is the part of history that I just got through telling you about. The league did not end in 1949. The league ended in 1963. And the history, untold history, is in that book. Things that happen. The second book is being written now, but the first book, Secrets of the Negro League, will, will educate the public about what happened in the Negro League and what's happening to the players living today. Okay, thank you for that, sir.